active on. Luis J. Gomez be uh, Brendan Shaw. So I'm sure you guys are aware that there's a bit of a rift between the LA guys and L the, the East Coast and West Coast comedians. From what I can see, for the most part, it's mostly, <coughs> it seems like, sorry, it seems like a, a battle between like the artist and the business people in the industry, I guess, because I guess for some reason or the other in stand up comedy or most art forms, I guess it's similar like this, right? Sometimes it reaches a point where it kind of breaks through critical mass and kind of captures the public imagination. And then it kind of becomes a business instead of it just being an art form where you go on stage and just shit house with your friends in the audience and kind of get a laugh of some audience members here and there. But now it's an entire industry. People are you know, building out studios, uh, you know, creating shows, writing on shows, doing tours, selling hundreds of thousands worth of, worth of merch, doing amazing live shows of the actual podcast. It's this home little infrastructure, right? That's kind of reserved on the West Coast for the most part. And then the East Coast guys are very much about the art of stand-up and what it means to just go and do a million spots a night. Um, all their podcasts are about jokes. There's less cerebral talk about, you know, crushing it and waking up at 5 a.m. and running loads of miles. You know, for the most, like, I don't know if you've seen it, for the most part, I would say most LA comics are pretty decent shape health-wise and then the East Coast guys are a lot more, you know, they're a lot more um, varied in their physical makeup. So it does make sense that there will be a bit of a rift between the people that think they're in it for the art and the ones that think they're in it, they're only in it for the money and, you know, rocking up to the comedy store, driving an amazing Porsche. So one of those battles is between Chris D'Elia, no, one of the battles, sorry, between Luis J. Gomez and Brendan Schaub. They've kind of had a bit of an on and off sort of tiff ever since I can remember. They've always kind of been throwing jabs at each other, mostly Luis J. Gomez to Brendan and Brian Cannon, to be honest. And I guess mostly because they don't really think Brendan's that funny of a stand-up, right? They think that he kind of got, you know, um, he kind of got uh, sped through his process in terms of being a stand-up comedian, which we can all agree on. I think if you're friends with Joe Rogan and you can maybe... I don't think the Joe Rogan thing is fair. Let's say that the most of the reason why he's been able to kind of jump a few steps is because of his podcast, T5K. The Fire and the Kid is really popular, successful podcast. He's built it over, you know, a whole number of years of being consistent and putting out great shows, especially in the beginning, great funny shows um, with some great guests, some memorable clips and moments. And he's been able to kind of use that as a platform to speak to his audience. And then of course, take that on and then do stand up in front of that same audience. You get a captive fan base that always wants to see you wherever you go around the wherever you go around the country. So it's a kind of opposite of what everyone else does where they go and they do the open mics, they go around to places that people don't want to see them and then try and build a fan base up that way. But nowadays with social media and the internet and with podcasts, and YouTube, you can essentially build an audience via the media I'm speaking to now, and then hopefully, wherever you have to sell them, whether it's a hoodie, whether it's tickets to a show, they'll obviously back you up. But it doesn't necessarily mean because you sell out of a hoodie that you're somehow Ralph Lauren. In the same way, if you sell out a show, it doesn't mean you're David Hell. But I guess if you're a comedian on the East Coast, it's just hard pill to swallow to see somebody like Brendan Shaw, who you think is not as skilled as you driving around in a Porsche and you know buying expensive trains every day. It can kind of grate you up. It kind of it kind of wind you up a bit, but um i guess they've been going at each other back and forth for a while and i think the the first kind of instance of it which i've kind of gathered here some evidence from the, 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 the from the legion of skanks subreddit that kind of details a little bit of why lucia gomez might have a bit of a issue with brendan Shaw. i think he mentions it in another video i'm going to mention but this is a recent shot that brendan took at Luis j which i thought was pretty pretty brave of him um considering how thin-skinned he is when it comes to comedians, kind of the, kind of the com yeah, let me play it here and get it for you, and then we can kind of continue. So this is the from the fire and the kid. I don't know what episode this was. I guess it's recently, and I guess um, this is a uh, Brendan's way of taking a shot where he kind of pretends like he doesn't know who somebody is. And against another comic, and I, I, they both I, really I've impressed only, me. I've only been around Lewis like once or twice. I don't know him. Yeah, uh, but I know he, Jason. Very nice. Lewis was very nice to me, and I, that's the only time I nice. got to know him. Was that? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Brendan Hayes, <laughs> he hates him so bad. Oh, it's I saw Lewis fights when he fought. Um, he fought. Come on, Brendan. He does this. Uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah Watkins. The slap fight. And, and Jeremiah beat him. Right. He lit him up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Jeremiah lit him up. But but but. So that was the first shot, right? And he thought, okay, cool. Something's going on there. And again, it's a bit. I'm a bit worried for Brendan because he's not the best when it comes to this ribbing. I remember him telling a story of being in a comedy store and 
maybe it was Anthony Jesselnik or somebody ribbing him and he kind of got, oh, I thought, I didn't think he liked me. And then Joe Rogan had to kind of calm him down and say, no, look, this is what comedians do. So for him not to know that anyway, that comedians kind of rib each other in this way was a bit concerning. But again, it's, it's a different world, the LA comedy scene. I'm guessing it's a lot more buddy, buddy, pally, pally. Um, it's a lot more Hollywoodish in that regard. It's not as probably, um, as probably, yeah, it's probably not as, annoying as it would be being in new york right having people constantly rib you and having to constantly be on your a game be on your toes to know how to sh fight back or you know throw a hell mary here and there so for brendan to kind of get involved in this tip for tat isn't the best way to go about things i think you're allowed to just i think in general i'm, I'm gonna say i think you're allowed to be jealous of brendan if you want if you're an la if you're an east coast comic it's fine you just need to be able to kind of parlay that or use that energy to kind of you know push your career in a certain direction <clears throat> but you're well within your rights to look at brendan and think how the fuck does he become so successful when he's not as good as i am at the thing that we're both doing but that's obviously not a fair comparison because he's obviously got a very popular podcast and if you're able to build a really big audience and you're able to sell them the things that you do it doesn't necessarily mean you're better it just means you're able to sell to your particular audience i think every show i've basically seen the brendan show where he's been on tour in the united states for the most part we look at a the crowd they look like a very it's very much a t fat k crowd right loads of dudes was it 20 was it was usa 19 to 35 is demographic whatever right um you know kind of chatty bro looking kind of guys who are into because i would never imagine somebody that laughs at a brendan short joke would ever be into a loose jay gomez type of comedy show anyway or legion of the scans guys they're not they don't even share the same audiences so for them to get annoyed by his success doesn't make any sense but i also do understand it in some regards right because you know it is what it is and you can only compare yourself to people that are around you and then i guess the second shot was this one this is from the fight on the kids subreddit as well. So big up the homeless cats for clipping this one. This is Brendan Strump talking another jab at him. <coughs> Sorry about this. My few managers are playing up. I should take my ass my pump. But hey, I'm going to hang in on there. This is Brendan's second shot at Lewis J. And then I'll just play you a video of him basically outlining exactly what his issue is with Brendan Schaub to begin with. Come on, load up quickly. <coughs> there we go. Play? Come on, play. There you go. There you go. Uh, because Lewis J. Gomez wants to fight me, but in an MMA fight, and I'm like, I, I heard. Are you sure, dude? I heard. I, I I don't know. I met him once. He was very nice to me. I don't know him at all. I saw his fight against Jeremiah Watkins, who I thought Jeremiah won that. And I'm like, you want to fight wait, Jason? Wait, no, he fought. Did you see him fight at Ellis Mania? He had an MMA fight no. against another podcaster, a Dutch or something. Like he had a he had how, a how, how nickname. Did he go? Did he he beat him. He beat him. He, like you know, he uh, he took him down and el you know elbows and stuff. He has submissions and he has a little bit of boxing. I Does don't he know have a much... jiu-jitsu background? No, no, he's a comedian. He has nothing background. He has no. He's just started training maybe a couple of years ago. Did so you I'm... have a big fit? Yeah, I mean, my fan base is as big as his, and I'm like, if we both Bigger. show up, yeah. but his thing is, <laughs> see, I don't know what he's doing, man. I don't know what Brendan's doing. This, this is good. not a good matchup, man. Lewis J. Gomez has nothing to lose. Brian has. Brendan has all the things to lose, and I guess um, he detailed a little bit of it. Here, Lucio Gomez basically explained his entire issue with Brendan, which I thought was a fairly fair point he made regarding the whole entire issue. I'll quickly play this clip for you now. Oh, let's pause this. This is not the right point about it. Let me get up on here. Was it 1943? Come on, load. Okay, let's go back here. Lucio Gomez details his actual problems with Brendan Shaw on his recent rap show uh with shane smith let's go back over here it's over here and it's around there this mark 1943 let's go back a little bit more <clears throat> okay cool there you go boom Initially, this is why we started taking shots at him um, was because he made this comment initially initial year when i did the uh, ls mania fight <laughs> against ryan o'neill they josh wolf who was the guy who was on the show brought up the ellis mania fight and then he asked callen if he would ever do it and then Schaub <laughs> said oh i'd be embarrassed if callen did something like that yeah yeah for me i took that as like oh shit he's popping off which is it's and it was in i wasn't genuinely offended it was just sort of the reason that we could start making little jokes and comments right so me and bisping we use it as a sound drop i'd be embarrassed blah 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 it's silly it's not really um anything but that's what it came from and then i responded with i was like well it's like a, a fighter doing a showtime special you know before he's ready <laughs> so i said uh, which look the problem is he opens himself up for the critic that criticism right so yeah. and here, here's the truth i don't i'm not even hating on show i respect the fact that this guy retired from fighting he is 
doing something. He's making a career for himself. I don't give a fuck, dude. If you can figure out a path to make some cash and succeed and, and sort of weave your way through life and, you know, do it. How do you yeah. not respect it? Whether I don't give a shit if you think the guy's funny or not, you like his podcast or not, you think he's an idiot. You have to respect the fact that he was able to navigate to where he's at. There's something sort of crazy there. Whether, you know, people are given opportunities, they're not given opportunities. Um, you still have to fuck. There are plenty of people that were friends with Joe Rogan that are not famous and are not rich right now. Let's get that's a really good point. And I guess that's and I guess that's a really interesting part of Brendan Schulz's career uh trajectory over the years. He's kind of turn people off mostly based on how he goes about conducting himself on his own podcast if you speak if he listens to any of these podcasts um and they kind of allude to his success <clears throat> most people always say he's a nice person to meet in person everyone says he's real salt of the earth kind of guy really cool really helpful friendly no one's got a bad word to say about him in person because i'm for sure com comedians are bitchy gossipy sons of bitches in it right if he was a bad guy behind the scenes, someone would say something. So for the most part, people like him in the industry, in the scene. His fellow peers, his comedians, they, they like him as a person. But he has made, he has turned so many people off online, fans and former fans, by the stuff he's said on his podcast, especially during COVID. It's just been, you know, pretty hard to listen to him rabbit on about numbers and all this sort of stuff. And he got COVID and refused to back down and double down his position, just being a complete doof about it. But all the way throughout the years, even throughout his MMA commentary and all this sort of stuff, that's the thing that's really turned people off. Not his actual success. His success has just been like one of those other things people pointed to like, oh, and also you don't deserve this and that and that and the other. But really the thing that people, people are annoyed about him of is because he just comes across really badly on his podcast. Which is the odd thing about it is that he has no um, reflect, self-reflection, I guess, in that regard. He'll be able to address it because it's pretty easy to address because it seems like he still has a, a big fan base, right? People are supporting the stuff he does. A lot of fans back the Patreon for the fight in the rinks. Um, it seems like, you know, um, his supporters buy all his merch, they buy tickets to his shows. So people like what he does. If only he could just somehow be able to become less unlikable on the podcast it'd be a lot better for him going forward and i guess he wouldn't have this kind of animosity with some people in the industry in terms of the comedians and stuff because it would because <laughs> i think a lot of the comedians just read the post online that kind of despised brendan too to kind of feed into their negativity about the guy but for the most part most of the people that meet him pretty much like him in general they think they think he's a pretty decent guy and no one really thinks that he's his success is if in any way taken away from their success because again you can't necessarily you can't honestly look at yourself if you're a legion of the scants guy and think that brendan schaub's audience would ever come to your show they're never going to do that right so you don't ever just share an audience it is what it is isn't it his success isn't your success but i just do think that he just runs up people so much especially just with what he says on his own podcast that it just makes it really difficult to even back him in any way shape or form even if you're other comedian so it is to see what happens with that one. I'm guessing if you're Brendan Shaw, we're definitely looking forward to um, Jason Ellis absolutely manhandling uh, Luis James Gomez so he can go back on the show and pretend that you don't know him. He didn't watch the show, but you saw him get beaten up. But I don't know, man. I, I, I think it's, it's sad to see, really. I, I do think there is a way that they could both coexist, um, the artists and the business people. I don't think the LA comedy scene is the be-all and end-all of everything. I think even at the time when they were all going on, this is the murder as well. It's the best place. To, come on, relax. There's good stand-ups everywhere, especially in North America. There's people killing it in their own little city uh, with their residency at a local club that don't travel much because they have families or because they've worked out a way where they can just be support support themselves via Patreon and just do the odd show every other month here and there in a local town where people know they act and they like what they do, right? It doesn't mean just because you're in a comedy store that you happen to be the pinnacle or the top of the mountain of comedians. That was always a bit of a fallacy anyway because if that's true, then Brendan Shaw would have, should have never been, you know, he should never be on the marquee. But again, because it's a business, they have to sell tickets, uh, bums and seats. If you put Brendan's name on there, he's part of the fire and the kid. Uh, people are going to come in, they're going to buy drinks, they're going to buy tickets. I get it, it makes sense, but let's not conflate the two things. But, let, you know, let's be able to have them both live in the same universe as well. I think anyway, in my opinion. But let's see what happens. Lucia is going to be, and it's, it's coming up very soon, I think. I'm not sure where. Um, it's probably going to be a pay-per-view thing, I imagine, on Gas Digital. I'd imagine so. I'm not sure how, where they're going to show those things, but you know who Brendan Schub's going to be rooting for in that one, isn't it? You know. Mm -hmm.